We look at some of the choice tracks from Anthony Phillips' brand new album, Strings of Light, and he's our special guest. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Book. Strings of Light is Anthony Phillips' first new album in seven years. Two CD set plus an extra DVD for 5.1 Surround Sound. An amazing guitar project. And I could do a long intro for you, but we're going to head right into it. Exclusive interview with Anthony Phillips talking about some of my favorite tracks from Strings of Light. The new album, was it all in the last year? Did it take those seven years to put together? Were you resting? I know you were remastering a lot of stuff. Tell me about that. No, I was doing a lot of TV music and stuff and some of the re-releases as well. But it took about um, two years, I think. I mean, going through material. I had to stop and do other things. But it took, because I was quite, because I'm doing a lot of keyboard work a lot of the time, I, I'm not on the top of my technical game. So writing most of it was reasonably easy with the odd exception. But then actually the difference between it sounding kind of okay as a composer and up to, if you like, performance, concert standards, the thing you've got to live with for the rest of your life, yeah. took a lot of time, you know, and I didn't want to do it all in edits. And there's nothing wrong with edits, you know, but, but except that I wanted to try and take, be able to get through each of these pieces. So it was, it was a question of two different things. Really, one, each individual, individual section, can you get this tidy? But the other thing was the stamina to go the whole way through. You know, because if you do take it in sections and you stop and do one bit and then another, you don't get the flow. It's much better to take a run at the whole thing and then you go back in and patch something that's not quite right. So it was two things. It was specific technical things and stamina. And that took a long time. I don't know if you know the phrase 5% inspiration, 95% perspiration. Well, this was probably 3% inspiration. Look, some of them were quite easy, like the first one. The first one, you know, was a 10-minute practice. You know, you know, a couple times a week. But some of like the last one was really technical, and some of the twelve-string ones. You know, when and you that's the old, longest you, piece, though. The last one's the longest piece too. It is. I mean, that that was a bit of a mind a mind screw in terms of which bits to leave in and which bits out because I had so many sections and I wanted to, I didn't want it to, to get too fragmented and too bitty because it's sort of like themes and then variations and there is some florid stuff and could easily have tipped over. In fact, I, I didn't think it was really going to come off, actually. I thought it was just going to come out as being too bitty. But I did use an engineer on this the whole way through the recording, which I haven't done for quite a while. And he was very objective and actually very encouraging about sort of keeping going. I would formally, if I was engineering myself, I would stop and redo sections and then carry on. His attitude was go at the whole thing and get the flow and I think it made a difference to be honest but um, a couple of the pieces are quite old I mean there's a couple of things from not after I left Genesis actually about a year after actually um, but most of it's within the last few years which, which ones are the pieces after shortly after I mean everyone's going to kill me if I don't ask <laughs> I know well somebody spotted it the other day they said well this sounds like a Genesis song it, like, well, it could have been a song there's one called Winter Lights on 12 string. And that was 1971, I think. So was Shoreline. They were part of, they were part of the same kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. That's that far back. You know, it's a long time ago. I mean, I, I've developed them, and they're more technical now. I mean, there were more. That I've added sections, but the guts of those was around when I was 19 or 20. I read on the liner notes, no overdubs, and I went, what, what, what? <laughs> well, I didn't want to show off, but at the same time, I thought it was it was a good idea, because there are some overdubs, there are a few overdubs as opposed to field day. There's the old, you know, cross fading, and there's an electric guitar at the end of, um, what's it called, Sunset, Ri Sunset River Bank, yeah. Oh, I think it's about Sunset River, yeah. Uh, but I wanted to show that you can do the whole lot um, without having to overdub. So actually, the bit at the end, I'm shimmering with my right hand, yeah. and I'm I'm hammering the notes with my left hand. The tune is purely produced by my left hand. 
You know, the Genesis guys are just going to love that if we, you say <laughs> stuff like that. Well, you, you do things on here which, you know, I, whenever an artist does something that I'll scratch my mind, ah, that's kind of cool. Like Into the Void starting the second CD, this little... This little ominous sounding piece, a little. <laughs> yeah, I tell you how that happened. That happened. I got an instrument called a two play, and I have a harpsichord, and the two play was sitting up alongside the harpsichord, and uh, I pulled it back, and it just it went. And what it is, it's the strings hitting the wood. And what it does is it gets faster and faster and faster. And so we did it with the 12 string and that's what it, what's happening. If you listen, it, I think it, the term is exponentially, but it, there is some math, I can't do math, but it goes into a, it goes each, each time it gets that bit faster. So that somebody somewhere could probably do a formula for that, for how many times strikes there are and what speed you're at at the end. You, know, you could probably get to Jupiter by the end. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. It's the sound of a guitar uh, 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 cascading, reverberating against against a piece of wood, and then getting faster as it as it settles. It's going ding, 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 ding. and then in the surround sound, we actually panned it at the end, so it's going around the room. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> a great idea. But see, it's it one of those pieces. Fun. It's one of those pieces that made me go, what, what? what? What's going on there? And I love that because you want to make, I mean, you don't always have to do it because it, it has an atmospheric feel to it as well, but it does create, there's pieces in it that, that make me stare at the speaker and go, wow, what's he doing there? Or is he playing mandolin there? Or what's he? That, well, I'm pleased because I wanted to try and make sure if it was guitar based up that it was varied in timbre and people weren't, you know, I was a bit worried about, when we came to do the order, it's quite tricky, you know, because you've got to get timbre, you've got to get pace, you've got to get mood. You don't want too many classical, you don't want too many slow pieces, you don't want too many dark ones, you know, too many happy ones. So it was a bit of a toss up. We did a bit of a, you know, balls in the air. And actually, the one we first came out with, we stuck with. Like Home Believe Road, for instance, what are you playing on Home Road? Home Road. It's, it sounds mandolinish. It, yeah, that's. It's not. It's like it. It's the thing called a bell saturn, which is like a mini twelve string. Yeah, it's a mini twelve string. Uh, jour de fête, I'm French, I was going, does that say jour de fête, the big day? That has a real joyous, it's the first track, it has a real kind of, to me, and, and I'm I'm relying when I tell you about these songs on how I felt, you know, because I don't know, I'm not a guitarist, yeah, yeah. but it has a joyous it's, feel to me. Yeah, it, it reminded me, um, I wanted to call it um, something much simpler, actually. I got voted out on a few of the titles, and in fact, James, my engineer, and John Dan, who runs my website, they came out with a couple of the titles, um, which is very helpful. I wanted to call it, um, I can't remember what I wanted to call it now, it was something a little bit more um, just kind of uh, prosaic, really. But Jure de Fet was nice, because I mean, uh, the vibe I got was a sort of a kind of um, happy pilgrim, just that sort of walking, marching down the road. And I'm just trying to find. You know, it's just kind of a happy sing-along, kind of, you know, uh, almost like a troubadour, troubadour kind of thing, not a care in the world. Uh, and that was the vibe that I always had from the start with that. When I looked it up, when I, I looked up the title, uh, the, the 1945, 49 French film came up and I went, I'm too young to, to remember that. Diamond 
Meadows. Again, that was, and again, I'm telling you how I felt, kind of made me feel like I was a bird flying, looking down at the meadows. It was just a free, amazingly positive feel to it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that was, a lot of people likened that to some of early Genesis in the sense that, well, you know, I mean, that was obviously, you know, Mike was very much involved, but it was initially even more my thing than his, you know, that expansive uh, 12 string arpeggio kind of thing. And so, in a way, I was just um, picking up a style which has always been there, right, really pretty much from the beginning, since since my road to Damascus that afternoon when I came across a guy called Tony Henderson of Charterhouse playing a 12 string in the field. And I said, well, listen, I love that sound of that, mate. I want one of those. And uh, so it just comes naturally to me to pick up a 12 string. It's in a very, it's in a pretty bizarre tuning. Not so sorry, not bizarre as in discordant, but a lot of the strings are not tuned in unison. So there's there's some quite big chords happening where you know you've got i.e. the harmonic structure is quite odd. If you let it out over a piano, you get some very tight groups and notes and then big spreads. So I think that's what gives it a slightly original quality, hopefully, which is the nature of the tuning. It's not what you would remotely hear on. You couldn't recreate that on a in normal guitar tuning. Not even close. You said that you separated the sort of like caprice and you separated the pieces that I thought were, in my opinion, kind of classical sounding. Yes, sure. I mean, it was a probably slightly more classical pieces than I'd realized actually so occasionally we had two running together and then it was important to try and mix up the mood so for instance Caprice in three is quite light and quite uh, not necessarily jolly but it's sort of um, you know it's, 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 it's a kind of light piece and then Castle Ruins is much more melancholy and I that I really tried to find without wishing to be sooty I, you know because it really reminded me of, of, of Spain Iberian and I wanted to try and come up with a title that had that. Well, I looked at all sorts of Carlson's of Spain and I couldn't come up with any. Or oh, they sounded too soothy, a little bit fake. So I just stayed with Castle Ruins. Mouse trip. First, I read it as mouse trap. You yeah, know, well, it's a pun on that. It's yeah. a pun on that, actually. You know, the famous Agatha Christie play. Yeah. Because it is a bit furtive and it is a bit like a mouse, and it gets faster and faster and faster. Yeah. It's bloody difficult to play, actually. That, to be honest. Yeah, that that took some. That took a bit of work, actually. Well, yeah, I could, I could sense the wink in the eye in the piece, and it's nice because it breaks it up too. Because I, and I I could tell you were beer, and you should be strategic on the feel and you know a good film does that too you know the the pacing so, yes, yes 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 well i'm delighted that he said because it was a bit of a it was a bit of a toss-up but that was always going to be quite well strategically placed in between two heavier ones if you like i mean restless heart is not as long as the last one but you know that's that's technically very difficult um and then of course the very last one is the um dreamy 12 string one still rain not still time still rain isn't it yeah grand tour to me had a like one of the bigger sounds of the album just by the way you, you're playing well that's a 16 string guitar believe it or not it's a 12 string with a higher one at the at the top and a lower one at the bottom made for me especially so it's a big beast and virtually impossible to play by man uh, and very difficult to tune and that took a lot of work and that's why I called it Grand Tour because it was a sort of grand enterprise uh, not realising that the recent album by Big Big Train is actually called Grand Grand Tour uh, so, sorry it's called Grand Tour but um, yeah that was that was a toughie that was a real toughie
you, you, you've not let, and it's something that I've come up with with a lot of the last few people I've interviewed, that, that sense of uh, discovery, that sense, you still have that sense of mystery in who you are, but when you were talking about your old school, you know, where you started with those early bands, mm. I sense that you had that then easily, but, but by default you should have it, not everyone does at that age, but you still have that sense of discovery. Yeah, I mean, I think it's lovely. I mean, I, 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 that's one of the reasons I like my kind of up guitar tunings is because you, it's a, it's a sort of like maybe no one's ever gone down this path before. Whereas if you're in normal tuning, it's much more difficult to be original. And of course you can be, but there's a sense that if you use an old 12 string tuning where you're not tuning the strings in unison, that you could just be hitting, you might be hitting a chord that's completely never been done, but it's going to sound, it'll be something that's much more rarefied than in most guitar music. Mm. And that's why I love developing a big collection of instruments, because you get this sort of strange timbre. For instance, I used on Crystalline, I used the Nashville tuning, which I'd not come across until quite late. It's the one where you tune, you tune in normal tuning, but all the strings are unwound strings i.e. they're all high strings so actually your top three are normal but then the next four five and six are the same notes as normal but they're an octave above what they would normally be and so you get this gorgeous sort of scrunching going on floyd used it on an out early album there are examples if you google it but it creates this incredibly lovely sort of crystal sort of shimmering uh, quality, very, very high uh, and sort of icicle like. think of the album cover because I was very curious about it there was just I thought a different version of a musical note what I mean what is the album cover what is that well I tell you what it is um, uh, it, it's actually another of these things is a little bit more prosaic than, than, than poetic um, but I was taking some photographs of a firework display and they went a bit strange and the original front cover was supposed to be the one on the back or on the middle which was the big sprawling you know the big massive looks like looks like something from outer space and my girlfriend said that looked like looks like guitar strings so we thought strings of light but actually it looked a bit too busy that for the front so this funny little one which with all the little musical notes that's that that's photographs of a firework display gone wrong <laughs> or maybe gone right or maybe gone right. I was about to oh, say maybe the same gone thing. Right, yeah. Mystery tale again. Hence the name. It has that sense of mystery. It, it, it makes it a, a thought provoking. A little, you know, it gives. It gave me that kind of feel. It's a funny little, I mean, the, the guitars, the, 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 the guitars range instrument on this from things that cost a hundred quid up to, you know, many thousands. And that was a hundred quidder. It's a little thing called a guitar arena, teeny little thing. And it's got quite a small sound, but it just got something. It's got something a bit special, the way it just kind of ripples. And, it, and yeah, the patterns were very kind of mysterious. And so, Mystery Tales seemed, seemed like a, a good time for. We also have a 12-part interview series with Anthony Phillips on our big sister station, Rock History Music, where he talks a lot about those first two Genesis albums, hanging around still, sometimes, with the Genesis members, and working on Peter Gabriel's first album. Now, those first few takes with Peter Gabriel didn't make the cut when the album was eventually released, but we talk about all kinds of stuff Genesis, so check it out, links in the description of this video. <laughs> 